94.9 CHRW, my name is Brian Tong, and I'm the host of Underground Currents. Uh, today I have Andy from Every Time I Die. How are you doing, man? Very good, very good. Very stressful day, but it's been all right. How has Warp Tour been uh, for its entirety so far? Good, yeah, it's been good. I mean, it's it's really weird, that the, like, where they started. They started in Texas this year, mm -hmm. and then they, we got the California dates done. We're usually, like, it would start in California and then end in California. Now it, like, starts in Texas and ends in Denver. Mm -hmm. um, but this, it's been weird. Like, a, a, a couple weird uh, drives. Like, they had us play Portland, and then we had two days off and played St. Louis, mm -hmm. which is, like, 2,000 miles. Yeah. <laughs> we were, like, in the... in the Like, we're sharing a bus with Terror, mm -hmm. and we were in the bus with Terror for, like, 37 hours. Just, like... Uh, like, we all wanted to kill each other, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a, there's a blog from this chick from Toronto that does... Uh, it's called Stuff on Scout's Head. It's like a dog and puts stuff on the head. And uh, I wanted to meet the dog really bad, so I put her on the guest list. <laughs> and uh, she brought the dog, and they let the dog. It was, like, right down here. Um, and I got to hang out with the dog, but I got, like, changed super quick. Like, I got the, the text message, like, hey, I'm here. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, my God, Scout's here. And I, like, ran over and, like, played with this dog for, like, 45 minutes before I had to do work. It was awesome. So you have a new record called From Parts Unknown that's out right now. Uh, I was just wondering what makes this so special compared to everything else you've done. Um, I don't know. I, to be honest with you, I think it's just... I guess it feels a little more real. Like, I, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, uh, we made it just a little more primal. You know, we wanted to, like... Uh, do is there is a lot of like trickery or whatever like on it but not like it's not like computer shit it's mm -hmm. like stuff that we did there's like roto toms on it like we tried to <laughs> we did it with Kurt Ballou from Converge and, yeah. and like he turns into like a little girl once you like get away from conventional instruments so like if a piano is involved he's like oh my god this is great you know like <laughs> a xylophone cool you know like yeah. you know just stuff like that uh, he, he, we used a glockenspiel and he was like lit up and just stuff like that um, we just tried to make it as, as bare bones as possible but like make it special with actual instruments instead of using programming or whatever you know what I mean yeah so how was Kurt throughout this recording process like how was it working with him it's t well one it's terrifying like we all grew up <laughs> like worshiping yeah. Converge you yeah, know what exactly. I mean so uh, you know the the big thing about him is that he's not he's not into uh, I don't know how to explain it like other producers like you know when you like get to that track they'll be like oh my god great job blah blah, blah. like they're really like they just let you know you're doing it. You know what I mean? Like, you, you did something special. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> and you're just like, well, should I, I mean, should I do it again? And yeah. he's like, no, no, that was good. Oh. And then, like, there's times where, like, me and Jordan will just be nitpicky. We're like... I'll play a riff over and over again, and then Kurt will like blur it out and just be like, "I've literally never taken this long on a riff in my life." And then you're like, "Shit, he's mad." You know what I mean? <laughs> like, ah, uh, like we bummed him out. Yeah. But you know, it's just me and Jordan being like, we the other producers that we worked with have just made us just run through stuff over and over again. Keith was talking in an in earlier interview about the fact that this seems to be a little more fun. Um, he seems to have a, um, the songs seem not seem to don't don't to be have they don't have a uh, like a more depressing kind of tone yeah. a little more fun do you feel like you had more fun recording this one or a more fun tone to it I honestly think we all did like we we did we we rented this old haunted house in Salem Mass mm -hmm. um, and like you know on other recordings you know we all had our own rooms but we kind of made it a point to like hang out instead of like if if there was like a if I was trying to finish a song or if I had an idea, a melody or something like that that I wanted to add to a song, instead of doing it by myself in my room, like on other records where, you know, if we rented like an apartment or like, you know, whatever, I was like, hey guys, check this out. I'm going to do this. What do you guys think? And then we were all kind of throwing like ideas into a, into a part. You know what I mean? And it, we, even with vocals, like he's a dude that used to not really like having dudes around when he would do vocals. And then on X Lives, we are forced to be like right here with him mm -hmm. um, and there were da days where he would come in and be like hey guys like what should I do here like I don't really know what to do and then like we'd start throwing ideas out and it was really cool I don't know it was like I think just the fact of forcing ourselves to be 
friends after 16 years, <laughs> like, made it a better record. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, so Keith had like laryngitis or something. Uh, he had something with his throat. Uh, just how was that day when he had to record dude, everything for terrifying? That was like, <laughs> well, I mean, dude, his voice was gone. He had no voice. Yeah. Um, and he had an idea of what he wanted to do, and it made sense. Uh, it just didn't work out. I mean, it was like the way he wanted it to. And I think like some of the stuff got kept from that like session where he did all that stuff but like most of the time I mean he was just like he'd come back in as soon as his voice back he's like dude let's do that again I can do it better you know <laughs> and it was dude it was for us it was just he beat himself up over it it sucked like, for us it was hard to watch him because he got in like this really depressed state and was mopey and like we would just you know he'd keep telling say, saying sorry and it's like dude it's like it's it happens man yeah. like us we can get another guitar we can need another amp mm -hmm. you I mean like it's your voice like yeah. you know like just take your time and get it better you know the, the name from parts unknown is kind of like a small reference to wrestlers being from parts unknown like kind of like ultimate warrior and yeah. stuff so uh, I was just wondering is there like certain things that like you're un still unsure about yourself uh, to a certain extent oh absolutely man I'm gonna be 37 this year and there's like a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff that you know I still have to figure out and I'm, with all of us I mean that's it's kind of everyone goes to the wrestling reference obviously it's not a wrestling reference it's it's more or less like you said it's just we're all coming from parts of we you know what I mean like yeah. and Keith was like you know Keith took a huge transformation in the last year where like he went from like almost being like a dude that like questioned himself and almost had like fake confidence to like a dude that has like actual confidence and it was like it was great you know he's a total different person than this year than he was like a year ago a year and a half ago so uh, let's talk about the latest music video you did decaying with yeah. the boys yeah. um first of all uh that music video was nuts yeah. <laughs> uh second of all i was just wondering how you got drew stafford to even be on on the music video he's got like eated lyrics tattooed on him and we didn't know and it just so happened they plays for our team and uh he did like um like this tv because he plays guitar and he plays drums and stuff like that and, and he did this thing on tv and he played new black oh really on the tv show <laughs> like they were like playing and it was like whoa he just played our song so yeah. like we called the front office and we we're like hey we're in this band like you know drew stafford played our song is there any way we could get a hold of them and you know we're in the same city so blah blah and then he ended up calling it and just became one of our friends i write like you know the band Gojira? Yes. It's like me and him do this thing that kind of sounds like Gojira together. And like the Goo Goo Dolls have a studio in Buffalo and we just go in and just hammer stuff out and it's it's pretty fun because he just wants to play drums and yeah. he just doesn't have the time to be in a band or anything like that because he's, you That's know, an cool. NHL player. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's oh, pretty okay. rad. Uh, also, with like getting an alligator, like Jeff the Animal Guy, or, yeah. or when I like, how does how does how does he even Dude, stuff this like is that? Be insane. So yeah. <laughs> Jordan, me and Jordan, the way every time I started is that I was in a grind band called Sirhan. Jordan was in a straight edge hardcore band called X Pride X. Okay. <laughs> the singer of X Pride X was Jeff the, the Animal Guy. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a straight edge front man for a band called Pride. And. Uh, yeah, that's literally how now it happened. Now he just alligators and lemurs. Yeah. Over to I mean, it was crazy. It sucks, too, because, like, PETA gave us shit about it. Like, really? Yeah. And it was like, dude, the, the animals were there for five seconds. Like, they came in, they did the shot, he put them in the truck and took them away. And that was it. And then PETA was like, you know, they were just coming up with shit and whatever. <laughs> They're dumb. Uh, so, Is there any point where you think you're going to release more music videos? Or is this I would like, like to. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to. I, the thing that's, uh, we, we did the two videos that go into each other. Yeah. So now everybody's expecting like a third part of it mm -hmm. and it's like yeah. it's done with the party like <laughs> they, they got the party that then that's it and like I think next it's time to do something I, I, I would like to do a video where we're just not even in it I would like to do like an animated video or something like that that's like cool. yeah I mean come up with this like we would come up with the idea but we wouldn't be in it at all what was the decision to have like Sean Ingram and Brian Fallon on the record how that come into fruition Sean is literally like we call him the big the, our big three is coalesce Converge and Cave In, mm -hmm. you know, and you could put Dillinger in there. I guess the big four. Yeah, I would like that, those are the four bands that like got every time that I started. Like the, the, we like worshipped those bands, yeah. and uh, it was just for some reason like those coalesce dudes like took to every time I die and like kind of took us under our wing. Like kind of all did. Like all those bands kind of did. Um, at one point in time, you know, we we had, we'd be under their wing. Um, and then it just came up, like, Keith was like, yo, I have this idea, I really want Sean to do this part or whatever, and 
you know, and hit up Sean. And the best part about it is that Sean's like, I don't know what he does, but he's like, I want to say that he's. <laughs> And that might be way off on this. Sorry okay. if this is wrong, but okay. Yeah, he's like independent wealth and independently wealthy through something. Like he owns a business and he does really well. So, Coles have kind of taken a, a step back. And uh, when we hit him up, he goes, "Just give me two weeks. I gotta train. <laughs> That's all we got back. I need two weeks. I have to train. That's all we got." And then the track came and it was sick. Uh, and then Brian was just like. Those dudes, Benny, the drummer of Gaslight Anthem, used to book every time I die shows. He used to book Buried Alive shows. Used to, I mean, like, that dude's been around forever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think we played some festivals with him last summer. And uh, just, yeah, like, hit it off. And then Keith hit up Brian. I was really worried because Brian's voice is so unique. Yeah. I was like, how the hell is he going to do this? <laughs> and it just so happened that the song was just perfectly catered for him. And then he... Uh, he did some crazy shit where he like, he did like a high take, a medium, like, or, I don't, I'm so retarded right now. <laughs> but he would do like, he did like, th- like, literally like six different versions, like mm-hmm. gruff vocals, really clean vocals, like everything just so we could have it. And then like harmonies, like it was crazy, dude. Like it was awesome. Like that dude is, he's got a sick voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what's next after Warp Tour? Uh, do you have anything uh, going on afterwards? Yeah, we got. I think we're. I think we're announcing a Canadian tour like Monday. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be back up in Canada. That's awesome. Uh, we go to Reading and Leeds, and then when we come back from Reading and Leeds, I think like God, I think like late September, we'll be back in Canada doing a Canada run nice. with two bands. One band being from Toronto, and then one band being from Pennsylvania. But I can't say anything yet. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Uh, so every time I die, their record from Parts Unknown is available now. You can grab it in stores, online, whatever you can. Uh, it's a great record, so I re- definitely, definitely recommend it. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Awesome.